Aha. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting Michael. room. Perhaps he had simply bucket. missed a memo. A good bucket. A strong bucket. A humble bucket. A committed bucket. A bucket of culture and distinction. Stanley pressed the bucket upon every little thing in the office. Nothing. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Yay, the end of the torment that is life. Okay, so we... A private but smelly place for an important person. A large room, lots of boxes. Trust the completionist instinct. Why wouldn't they tell us something will happen? Special room is widely feel important. So a private but smelly place for an... Oh, toilet. Upstairs. VIP. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Friend. You're getting close now, Stanley. You've nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, you'll collect the last one, and then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. We'll be different people by then. Different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now, we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. Okay. Can you take the bucket up the elevator? Does it change the elevator? Oops. Out. That was a brilliant game. Blast from the past. I'm guessing nothing happens here. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read 
mind control for... Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the Bucket would both meet a violent death. The door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the Bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the Bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. Let's go! Hello? It's fine. Bucket will protect. Bucket is life. As the machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the Bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the Bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the Bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a Bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley. The Bucket is life. Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the Bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, the Bucket's life came to an end, as it was crushed violently to death. Um, this way. It was a shame, the death of such a magnificent Bucket. It's true that all Ooh, buckets are radiant different. in their own way, but this one stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket, gone. bucket to what? behold. Why bucket gone? I want bucket back. The bucket. Welcome. Welcome you to the grand exhibit. You are standing at the precipice of knowledge. Such, Much like a bucket itself, the human mind is frequently empty within a cavernous void, but... Through use of the exhibit in front of you, the mind becomes full and enriched, and sus substantiated knowledge of Bucket and its history is the only true knowledge we really have. Will you take what you have learned, what you learn here, out with you into the world? Will you accept it with an open mind? What may be challenging about the information in this exhibit will you change the lives of yourself and your loved ones as a result of the exhibit, or will you turn a blind eye and continue to live as you were in? Ignorance and darkness. We never want to kill the bucket. Bucket is life. Can Buckets. you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this Fair and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Give me Can bucket. you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? Inferno Bucket, a replica of the Inferno Bucket, which is in the medieval era, so powerful and luring that it drove dozens of nations of war with one another to control of it. Billions died, and yet, in spite, it is a simple fact. Aw, oh, can't pick it up. The Stress Bucket. <laughs> Love it. Cave drawer. While we know that the bucket predates the existence of mankind, we do not know by how long. This cave drawing depicts early man's discovery of the practical use of the bucket, by which time the bucket had already likely been around for several millennia. Notice in these drawings how the bucket is allowing itself to be used, having judged humanity to be worthy of its treasures. Fuck's sake. No man can own a bucket. And certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. The hanging bucket. Yeet! Nailed there it! There is something we can do. Something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong.
Let Stanley die. Let him be oh, crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as Oh, is there an invisible world, floor? A new vision. Genius. So, success? Okay. How wonderful. Stanley was alone. Finally. This is great, he thought to himself. This is what I've wanted all along. I got what ah. The embrace of an old friend. A weathered companionship that stands the test of time. You can put boobs in buckets, so Stanley sure. Touched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Okay, what we got left on the checklist for collectibles. A large room, lots of boxes. <laughs> large room, lots of... Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet. Simply because yeah, that's I have no right. remaining I'm guess to come into a staircase. Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Get down. Up. Yes. This Wait, one. Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. The number three. Lottie just said, Why are you carrying a bucket? And I said, Bucket is life. How, how does she feel about Bucket life? Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Well, he said, the number three is such a special button, I'm having the time of my life. <laughs> Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley who had always felt such a connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. <laughs> I shall bring her Perhaps bucket to Comic-Con. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from slamming the number three repeatedly. Bucket.
A hint of regret nagged in the back of Stanley's mind. Should he demonstrate the number three for the... No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together, and I just want you to see <laughs> what I see. Feel the happiness She will I only feel. get bucket from me. He smiled at the bucket, and the bucket said nothing. Here we go, said Stanley. This time I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories through the number three, stories of his dreams and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind. Anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all. Only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. Stanley and the bucket were so close, they'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He knew that there must be a way to get through to the bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? There's always a solution. Stanley, I know what to do. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. He decided right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three over and over. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt so alive when pressing it. Then the bucket would be able to see his joy through the eyes of others it would get to see the world react to this discovery of Stanley's. And it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally understand Stanley's work. Okay. For months, he advertised and marketed his press conference, Stanley, building excitement Stanley, around it, Stanley. developing and rehearsing it until it couldn't be refined a single measure it. further. When the big day arrived, Stanley was as prepared as he'd ever been for anything in his life. World peace, baby. Stanley tonight live on stage. Fuck it. World's first sentient machine. Doing great. To stage! This was it. One last chance what, what to win the bucket over. One opportunity to share a true connection with a loved one. Free, free, free. Yeah, she's a genius. There was no one here. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak, to listen to him talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, uninteresting. He was a failure. And in that moment, Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. The bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, 
neither wishing to state the obvious that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit, only a silence that consumed the space between friends. And Stanley, having Voice. for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. Yep. Yep. Ooh, the bucket anywhere, made yeah. Stanley want to be a better man, and a be um. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Boxes. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was it? No. Never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. G good. But Stanley feared that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket, his dearest friend. So he threw himself to his death that they might die in one another's arms. How deeply touching. Okay. Not everyone is so lucky to have a bucket, but Stanley is a very... Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley... Yeah, we don't care about the, the meeting room. Shut up. Him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. The real question is, will Lottie was, share gummy bears? Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly There's did whatever the bucket asked. How do we... Oh, there's several balloons. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the phone. <laughs> oh, hold on. Why did you unplug the phone? Were you genius. trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was she joking. Let you have Obviously, the bucket isn't road. talking to you and telling you to I do am. things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. Ugh. Can't you see? Oh, oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? <laughs> Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Oh, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it, but there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. Um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. What is comedic timing? What is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more importantly, can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. 
These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then spell out your name a second time. With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half, pausing only for bathroom breaks when necessary. <laughs> when the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. Let's practice screaming, I'm Dunny with the funny now. I'm Dunny with the funny. No. Good. This saying is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times. Just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut-busting little scamp. After all, with each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12-legged invader who threaten our very existence and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles. All of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth reign supreme. Yay. Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along, let's head back. Okay. I can feel it. This time, I'm really going to nail the delivery. You'll be There's in stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. The king of comedy. That's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we had the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now? Well, I wouldn't be the king of comedy, that's for sure. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke. The bucket spoke. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. Um, okay. I'm guessing I have to do it on the way across? Maybe? Yeah. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. We're back at the phone already. No, no, no. What's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to be a build-up to this point. A dramatic display of remarkable comedic wit which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land. Well, not the way it was meant to. And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. What an egregious mistake. I've made a fool of myself. I don't deserve the title of King of Comedy. I'm nothing. I'm not even the lowliest joke-telling whelp. I think... 
I think I need to go back and rewatch that instructional video again. Oh God, no! Well, surely that will help me improve my. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> When Stanley and the Bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Fine, I'll go left. No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely down and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. I'm going to be never my fault. in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at oh, every okay. one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud of yourself for bringing me down, Stanley? Are you proud? Stanley, you love the bucket so much, it's like you... Um, it's as though all of your other most prized possessions Long. pale in comparison. Yes. Well, let me try that again, Stanley. I heard that you are pale with shame over how unabashedly in love with a bucket you are. No? Still not? It, is it the delivery? Pale with shame. Pale with shame? <laughs> pale... What's another word to describe a bucket? Stanley, this bucket is so metal, I think I saw it playing guitar. Oh no. God! No, These no, are bad no. jokes. Getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I'm just... I'm no good at these jokes. I need more instructional videos. That's exactly what it is. That's what will make me the king of comedy again. More instructional videos. Let's see. Let's see. Fucking like a gold turd, maybe. Okay. All of his co-workers would... It takes a lot of humility to carry a bucket so magnificent. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to, to the him, vent. telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift. Yes, go there. Go to the cargo lift. Aha, this way. Was there a figure ring back there? Is that in here? Elo, it's all your fault. Okay, this is day number 295. Tape number... I don't even know. I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. The longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes. Sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. It doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. Still haven't figured out why I see the world so yes. differently when this bucket is in my arms. Why everything feels so. What do I do with this treasure? I can. I can monetize it. <laughs> yes. It's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful, because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't You're know sorry, who I'm trying to get. 
What's that? Who's there? Rip.